hey guys and welcome back to my channel um so today we are doing things a little bit differently i asked you guys a couple of weeks back if you wanted to see anything on my transitioning story and a lot of you guys said yeah we want to know the tea <laughs> so um hi baby so today we are going to be talking about how I transition. I figured I'd get cute for this video because I am going to be inserting old pictures and there's going to be a lot of bad makeup and missing eyebrows and forehead. <laughs> I thought I was cute back then. Um, so <laughs> if you're interested in hearing my transition story, just keep watching. A lot of you guys don't know that I transitioned. Obviously, I started YouTube once I was kind of well on my way with figuring out my natural hair journey. And so there are a lot of pieces to the puzzle that you guys don't get to see. And I feel like sometimes because we don't get to see each other's journeys, we really do have this perception that somebody else's life or hair journey is a lot easier than our own. And we just assume that these people didn't have any struggles, didn't go through anything, they never had any setbacks. And that's absolutely not true. Um, I started transitioning right around like 2013-2014. Um, I started transitioning my freshman year of college. So just some backstory on my hair. I've always had a lot of hair on my head. Um, when I was younger, I hated getting my hair done. Like, absolutely hated getting my hair done. Even though, like... My hair wasn't necessarily hard to do. Like my mom was used to doing that much hair, but I was just not cooperative. Like I didn't want anybody doing my hair, unless it was my dad. <laughs> and so eventually, I think I was like nine. Yeah, I was around nine years old. And my mom was like, well, if you don't want to get your hair, like you don't want me to do your hair, then you can start going to the salon and you can get relaxers and you can let them do your hair. And that was what we did. I always had long hair. I always had length to my hair. And at that point, I was basically taking care of it myself. When I was in between times where I had to go to the salon, I would wash my own hair. You know, I would blow dry it, style it, all that stuff. Once all that, you know, start, I started doing relaxers. My mom didn't really do my hair unless there were like certain styles that I wanted. Like, I wasn't really good with the curling iron or anything. So she would like, curl my hair sometimes um but aside from that like it was pretty much me doing my hair learning my hair all of that good stuff and I really think that because I was in that position it really set me up to kind of learn my hair and understand what my hair was doing and to actually be able to like start my natural hair journey later on down the line I would say before I first cut my hair I had reached about bra strap length Actually, it was a little below bra strap length. And at that point, I was tired. Like, people who have never grown their hair out long, just have never had long hair, don't really understand how much work it is to have long hair. And eventually, it got to the point where, like, I had to ask my dad to come flat iron my hair one morning because, like, my arms were too short. And I just got really, really frustrated. And after that, I was like, you know what? I'm going to cut this. So I did start going shorter and shorter. I think the shortest I ever went was like here. I got like, you know, the the whole bob thing was in thanks to Rihanna. <laughs> and so everybody had a bob. I got a bob. Um, I got bangs cut in one time. And I got a lot of flack for cutting my hair off. A lot of people really treated me like garbage because I cut my hair. I had kind of decided that... I wasn't necessarily the fan, the biggest fan of having really long straight hair. It just got really annoying and my short hair was easy to take care of. Like I didn't have to worry about it hanging all over everything, snagging on my clothes. I didn't have to worry about whether I could reach my hair in the back or not. Like it, it was easy. And I had a lot of health issues back in high school and so I didn't really have a lot of time to take care of my hair. Um, I had to be kind of in bed a lot. I had a lot of issues. And so it just made more sense for me to cut my hair. <laughs> so um, fast track to college. My hair was already relatively short at the time. I went to Meredith College out in Raleigh. I was about an hour and a half away from my hairstylist. And I wasn't going to get my hair done as much as I should have. Especially not in terms of like when I was supposed to be relaxing my hair. But I didn't really care about that. 
but eventually and I think just because I had gotten kind of lazy in college with my hair um my hair really started to break off it started breaking off a lot <laughs> like to the point where like I would do my hair in like my friends rooms and they'd be like there's hair everywhere and it was just broken off hair like it wasn't shedding hair it was just hair that was breaking off and around like November, December-ish of um, 2013, I went and got my hair done and I think the relaxer was left in a little bit too long because I had absolutely no body to my hair. My hair just stuck to the sides of my face. Like it just looked gross and I was not happy with it at all. I was always used to at least having some type of body in my hair because you guys know I have fine strands and so if you relax the living crap out of fine hair, like it is going to break off. It is going to be flat. You're not going to get anything out of it. At that point, I had decided I wasn't going to do any more relaxer. I had already kind of started into the phase of transitioning anyway, because I just hadn't gone back. And so I talked to my aunt, my aunt's a hairstylist, and she said, well, Brie, your hair is overprocessed, you know. <laughs> she checked out a couple of things. She looked at my hair. She was like, your hair is definitely overprocessed. You're not going to get that body back. And she was like, what you can do is you can just go ahead, let your hair grow out, stop getting relaxers and keep straightening it. Or you can go ahead and do that, but kind of plan to transition. And that was what I did. I just decided I'm going to go natural. I didn't really have any understanding of what going natural would be like. I didn't really have any expectations. <laughs> All I knew was that I probably had some type of curl pattern because in the past, like I had kind of, there were times where I had just let my hair dry with no product in it. I thought I was doing the damn thing. And now that I look back on it, I'm like, man, it looks hideous. But you can see that I had some type of curl pattern in there. I had no clue how like tight or not tight my curls were. I didn't know anything about hair type, porosity, all that shit. I didn't know anything about that. I was starting with a blank canvas. And so my aunt just told me like, just make sure you have a really good shampoo, a really good conditioner. She was like, you can deep condition if you want to. If you don't feel like it, then don't do it. Um, at the time, I was still straightening my hair because I had so little hair that had grown out that it made no sense to try to like, style it so I had this conversation with my hairstylist when I went to see her again and she was like if you want to transition then like let's do it and she was super duper supportive like that issue that I had with that relaxer was the only issue I'd ever had with my hairstylist so she was really supportive and she you know like basically backed up everything my aunt said like just make sure you have a really good shampoo conditioner right now if you want to straighten straighten just try not to straighten as often so I was straightening about once a month at the time, trying to kind of like wean myself off of so much heat because before I was um, heat styling my hair way more than I should have been. I should have been trying to stretch out my hair and instead I was straightening it way too often. And that also led to a lot of the damage that I had. So that was where I started. I just started with shampoo conditioner. I found a really cheap deep conditioner from, I think it was L'Oreal, it was the L'Oreal Total Repair 5 Damage Erasing Balm, you know, like the little one in the yellow and black packaging. Um, and so eventually, I kept going to get my hair clipped. One point, I did do a very large chop on my hair. It wasn't a big chop, I still had relaxed pieces in my hair. Actually, still quite a bit of relaxed pieces, but I had cut my hair pretty much about back to almost jawbone length. It was really, really short at the time and I loved it. I loved having short hair um, and I was still keeping it straight, um, but eventually I kind of started to try to like get away from all the straightening and getting into natural hair products. And so around this time, this is like going into my sophomore year, like the beginning of my sophomore year, my friends started teaching me like how to do Bantu knots and stuff like that. And so that was the style that I learned and that was the style that I did. Um, she put this, I think it was the Motions Smooth My Curls Pudding or something. She put that in my hair to do a Bantu knot and I loved it. And so I started Bantu knotting right around I guess technically going into 2015 I started bantu knotting um 
Yeah, because it was snowing around then. So I started Bantu knotting around then and I really, really enjoyed it. Um, and it was just nice because I could wear the Bantu knots out if I wanted to. But then, you know, once they dried, I could take them down and I could enjoy that. And I would usually have to like at least kind of loosely Bantu knot my hair every other night to get the curls to stay. But I usually kind of have like this kind of fluffy fro kind of look and I love that about my hair. Like I just love the fluff in it. I didn't really care about definition. The only thing that I cared about was that it was getting healthier, that I was keeping moisture in my hair. That was really all I was focusing on because when you have damaged strands, it is so hard to keep your hair moisturized. So I basically started out with like a couple of products. I was not a, pro a product junkie back then. And eventually I started like branching off to different things. So I tried the Shea Moisture Manuka Honey and Mafura Mask. That was like the first serious, serious deep conditioner that I tried. This was before like people were really hype on that. Um... You could barely find it in the stores, but I really liked it back then. I was using that. I was still using my L'Oreal faithfully. Um, I was using, I think, the Cream of Nature Argan shampoo and conditioner. Um, and every now and then, like, I would try a new mask once I finished one, but I usually went back to the ones that I knew. I would sometimes wear my hair in Bantu knots. I would sometimes straighten. And every time I went to see my stylist, I got more clipped off, and she would just kind of look at my hair, and she was like, yeah, it's doing great. It's healthy. Like I was kind of starting to see my curls and the more my hair grew out um, and the more those curls kind of took, the better the Bantu knots looked. <laughs> so that was really nice for me. Um, I would say all in all through the transitioning process, I kept things very simple. I didn't do a lot to my hair. I stuck with the same styles. I stuck with the same regimen. I would shampoo my hair at least once a week. Eventually, once my hair, I was kind of having some issues with dryness, I tried out co-washing and I realized that I did really like co-washing. And the one thing that my stylist told me was that just like, make sure you're shampooing your hair, don't just rely on co-washing because it's not doing anything, you know. So, eventually I started co-washing, I was watching a lot of videos, um, I was watching Nappy Foo, Nappy Headed Jehovah. I kind of started watching Glam Twins at the time. Ty Crable, she's not on here anymore, but I watched a lot of Ty Crable's videos. Curlicious J, Ashkin's Curls, Qu Quinn Ray. I was watching a lot of those people at the time. And I really enjoyed their videos just because it kind of gave me an idea of like what healthy hair should look like, what things I was running into that I didn't really understand and I needed help with. Um, because even my hairstylist, like, obviously she knows hair and she's a great stylist, but she always kept her natural hair short. And so there were things that I would run into with, with my hair, with it being longer, that she didn't really have a lot of personal experience with because she kept her hair short. And I was one of the few clients that she had that actually was growing out their hair. Most of her clients were keeping their hair short. Um, and so I watched a lot of people that were on growth journeys, people that already have longer hair, just so I could figure out like what, what the heck some of those things were. Cause like, I didn't know what a single strand knot was. Like I didn't, I didn't know any of this stuff. Right. Um, and then I just like did research when I had time, but I genuinely guys, I kept my hair routine super duper simple and, um, it worked out for me for the better around end of summer 2015 I had officially cut off all of my relaxer I was officially natural and I absolutely loved it um I wasn't really sold on my curl pattern yet like I didn't really understand what my hair looked like how it felt completely because when you go from like having those damaged ends to just having a head full of curly hair very different experience and so I did end up having to switch up my products and motion stuff didn't really work on my hair the way that I hoped that it would I hope that it would just continue to work and it did not um and so I kind of moved on to other things I started using Talia Wajid and Proclaim yeah a lot of the Talia Wajid products as well as the Proclaim I think it was an olive oil like 
moisture cream or something really really helped with protecting my hair they kind of they kind of made my hair a little greasy like now that I look back on it my hair was my hair was a little slick so a little slick but <laughs> it really helped with protecting my hair because I was just so afraid of like having that breakage issue again and so it really kept that from happening which was wonderful and so those are the products that I use I think the Talia Wajid I was using like a kid's leave-in and the curly curl cream I was also using the Pantene like curling pudding at the time that was a product that I actually really really liked back at, back then back in the day I don't really like Pantene products that much anymore but um it was just all kind of me trying new things one at a time and what I did do was um and I think this comes from just me being kind of a sick kid I journaled a lot and so when I would try a new hair product I would write down what I really really liked about it and I would also write down what I really really didn't like about the product and once I finished it I would kind of weigh the pros and the cons and I would decide whether I would buy it again or whether I would try something else and that really helped me a lot because it really helped to steer me in the directions of what am I liking what am I not and so when I put together all the things that I didn't like in a product, it was much easier for me to try new things. I could look at what I really enjoyed and I could read the claims on the packaging of things that I wanted to try and see if it sounded like something that I was looking for. I was not shopping for hair type, I was shopping for my hair needs. And that's where you should start. You should always start with shopping for your hair needs. So if I realized that I wasn't getting something from a product, like let's say it was too moisturizing, I'll put that down. <laughs> Things that were super duper heavy butters, I realized I wasn't a big fan of those. They didn't do anything for my hair. But this also goes into just taking the time to sit down and learn about what your hair is telling you, you know? Um, if you really take the time to do your hair on a schedule to create a regimen, your hair will tell you what it's missing. And yeah, it might take a couple of tries to get it right, but you're still going to figure it out because your hair is going to tell you everything that you need to know right off the bat. Um, and that was what I did. I just listened to my hair. I wasn't really hung up on all of the extra things when it came to my hair. I just did my hair. And if it looked good that day, it looked good that day. And if it didn't, it didn't. If I had a failed wash and go, sometimes I would wear out my really, really bad wash and goes. Um... I wore out a lot of really bad Bantu knots. <laughs> Lord, let me tell you, I wore out some terrible looking Bantu knots. But nobody really cared but me. And so around that time when I had cut off my hair, that was when I um, finished cutting off my relaxed ends. That was when I started venturing off into trying wash and goes. So sometimes I would do Bantu knots, sometimes I would do wash and goes. And the first product I tried that gave me a successful wash and go, I've told you guys this, was Camille Rose Curl Maker. And honestly, a lot of those wash and go fails were just me not understanding that, like, not all products mix together. Like, this was something that I didn't understand. Like, no one was really putting products in their hands together and testing them. I didn't really know that was a thing until I started watching Mono's hair. And I learned a lot of stuff from her. Um, but... Curl Maker was the one product that really just like sat with me. I was also at that point using a lot of Shea Moisture. I was a Shea Moisture nut. Like I had way too much Shea Moisture. Like everything I had was Shea Moisture. With the exception of like the, the couple of Camille Rose that, products that I would try in between. And um, I think Shea Moisture like did what I needed it to do at the time. But when I look back on it. I had to layer a lot of their products more than I have to layer the stuff that I do now. If I didn't have layers of Shea Moisture products, then I didn't have long lasting moisture. Um, and I was also like at a point where my hair wasn't that long, so I was only um, doing my hair once a week. It would usually last um, unless like that was around the time where I was, I had started my um, field research job. And so for me, <laughs> Sometimes I did have to like midweek co-wash. That was really how I started midweek co-washing was when I started that job because I was working out in the heat sometimes 100 degrees or higher and I would sweat my hair out. <laughs> and so I would have to come back and rinse my hair 
um, and just rinse my skin. And also, I was working in tobacco, so I really didn't want any of that in my hair anyway. That was when it really became like wash and go season for me. And I really started to see my curls pop. You know, looking back on it, my wash and goes were not cute at all. But I tried <laughs> and I kept learning and I kept trying new things and I kept trying new combinations and eventually I did build up a little bit of a stash and I started finding things. I noticed that I was really seeing the type of things that I liked in my hair and more and more I was buying products that really reflected the things that I liked in my hair and um, that entire process took about three years. I would say it was about three solid years of transitioning for me. And I never really, I had a lot of bad days when I was transitioning, but I can't say that I like loathe my transitioning process. And that was why I wanted to make this video because I feel like a lot of people like shit talk transitioning, but those are people that have never transitioned. And you don't understand transitioning unless you've done it. Like you just have to do it, you know? And the thing about transitioning is that if you start transitioning and you decide, and I'm not a fan, you can just chop all the shit off, like, <laughs> you know, like, it's, it's, it's kind of non-committal, you know? You can go ahead and let your relaxer grow out and work on those, you know, pieces that are coming in and just try to keep your hair nourished and protected and go through it. Or if you decide you don't want to do that, then you can just not, you know what I mean? So... I just wanted to make this video for all of you that maybe want to transition, maybe you're going through something with your hair, maybe you've used a little bit too much heat on it and you need to transition again. Um, My natural hair journey, for me, in my mind, I saw it as easy because I wasn't fussing over a bunch of different stuff, you know what I mean? I had issues and I had a lot of setbacks to get me to where I am now with this full head of hair on my, on my head, like I just... Sometimes I'm still amazed at how great my hair looks now because my hair looks so different back then. And I came from such a different place. And I had difficult days. Like I had days where I did not want to do my hair. And guess what? I just didn't do my hair, you know? I had days where my hair really, really stressed me out where it just didn't look right. I've cried over my hair. I've gotten really frustrated. I've broken a lot of combs and a lot of brushes and a lot of other things trying to get my hair done. I think a lot of people just have this perception now that a natural hair journey for someone with hair like mine is always super duper easy and it's not like the only thing that made my transitioning journey easier was that I just started at a small place and I stayed small through the whole thing. I didn't start off buying like 50,000 products and then getting upset because I felt like none of them worked. If you don't have somewhere to start you're never going to be able to figure out what works the best and what doesn't. If you start huge, if you do the absolute most when you're starting a journey like this, then you're never really going to take the time to understand. Like, you're never really going to take the time to see what works and what doesn't. And that's a big part of the problem with people that transition, people that are really upset with anybody, really, that is having a successful hair journey. Um, you have to take the time out to start small. You have to put the work in. Um, my hair has never been just a super easy, like, oh, I just slap stuff in my hair and go. I do my hair twice a week. I've kept up with that regimen for a very, very long time. Um, and when I tell people the actual building blocks of my regimen, they're like, oh no, that's too much work. And it's like, it really isn't if you actually just do the regimen, you know? Establishing a regimen is really important and that was what I did from the jump regardless of where my hair was whether I had a hair full of relaxer or a head full of natural hair. There are so many things that go into transitioning and a lot of it is a personal um, look in into yourself. You kind of have to look inward and assess what is it that you feel like you can do? What do you have the time to do? Like what what is your temperament? Are you impatient? You know, are you easily disappointed? Like, those are things that you have to think about and you have to adjust accordingly. Nobody's transitioning journey is ever going to be easy because you're dealing with two different types of hair. You know, you have, well, really, honestly, three because you have the hair that's growing out of your head, you have all these relaxed ends, and then you have that midpoint. And if you're not making sure that you are taking care of every single piece from the root to the tip, 
then I'm telling you, your hair is going to break off and you're going to, it's just going to make the, the journey that much more difficult. But you have to stay the course to really, really see the results. And you have to be married to the idea that this is not going to happen overnight. No natural hair journey is going to happen overnight, whether you choose to transition or you decide to big chop. So I was fully natural. Um, come 2016, it's now 2019. I've been fully natural for three years. Um, pretty soon it's going to be, technically it's like three and a half years, if we're being technical about it. It's been like three and a half years. So um, I'm getting ready to come up on year four, but yeah, I mean, I, I work really hard to take care of my hair and I just wanted to make this for those of you that are on journeys, you're thinking about starting another journey, you know, a lot of people are big chopping again. I think Quinn Ray just big chopped. Um, do what works for you. Don't let anybody discourage you from transitioning or big chopping or whatever. Do what makes you comfortable. I know I wouldn't have been happy if I had, if I had just big chopped and so I decided to transition. But um, yeah, a journey is all within that person. No one person's journey is the same. And no one is ever going to have just a super duper easy hair journey. Like learning new hair is hard. And so give people their props where their props are due. I, I genuinely believe that we can learn from everybody's experiences. Um, but yeah, that that's it. That's my transitioning story. I hope you enjoyed this and also enjoyed all of the pictures that came with it. <laughs> um I already know, like I haven't even started editing this video and I already know those pictures are going to be, ooh, ugh, but if, you know, y'all are real ones, don't, don't roast me too hard in the comments, okay? <laughs> but yeah, I really hope that you guys enjoyed this. If there was anything that I didn't touch on that you would like me to touch on, let me know in the comments below if you have any additional questions. Honestly, I feel like there really, really wasn't that much in depth that I could talk about. Um, I am also going to get ready to film my top five tips for transitioning. This was just my story and how I did it, but I have very specific things that um I did during my transitioning journey that I felt like really, really helped and I think will help you guys too. So stay tuned for my top five tips for transitioning. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Please leave me a comment down below. I love to talk to you guys down in the comments and I will see you in the next video. Bye.